we need to really discuss, though, is how much more enjoyable this is going to be. I know Arizona fans are bummed about not playing Kansas, but we are playing good teams in real environments. We can't lose track of that when it comes to this year. It is weird in a way to think, like, there's no more midweek game in Pullman. Yes. There's no more Thursday night, 9 p.m. game at Oregon State with six people in the crowd. Right. Like, those games are gone. It's weird. It, it is. It's, it's, it will take a little bit of time to get used to. But, like, the schedule, just looking at it, man, it is wild. Like, it is like – it is a wild schedule because there's no – and look, like I, I realize Oregon State beat Arizona and all that, but, man, there's just really no days off, is there? Yeah, so let's get to this. Uh, now, uh, boat, sho uh, boat Shoes Blitz. Oh, great name. I'm looking wow. forward to not being the default conference champion. Make th makes things more exciting. All right. So let's uh, let's get into this. Jacob Franklin, pull that schedule right up. Back up, please. Right back up. All right. So here are the home and aways for Arizona. We're going to go. Uh, we're going to go all the home and aways, and then we're going to talk about it. All right. Arizona, Arizona State, obviously. There's two wins. Um, what do you think about that, Sheer? That will obviously always be the case. Uh, we will never say otherwise. And I'm actually looking forward to ASU. KJ Lewis versus uh, versus Sanin. I'm all aboard for that one. I'm in on that one as well. Now a home and home with Baylor. Now, Good man, yeah, that's <laughs> gonna be that's gonna be a brutal one because here's a, Baylor is a top five team in the country. Shear is still uh, kicking himself because he didn't think Scott Drew was any good. Um, this is gonna be a big one though. Shear Arizona going into Waco. Yikes! But then uh, uh, Wake or Waco, then Baylor coming back to Arizona. You know, I mean, this is really going to be one. Arizona didn't play any teams like Baylor last year in the Pac-12 that were that big, that physical, et cetera, et cetera. So my viewpoint now, and I'm going to be consistent in this, Mike, is that, like, when you have a home and away against Baylor, uh, I'm cool with a split, right? right? Like, we're not in the Pac-12 anymore where you have to beat teams twice. And, you know, if I can play Baylor twice and go one and one, I'm cool with it. I right. just say it. Like, Baylor's really good. They're, they're one, if not the favorite to, to win the Big 12. It's probably Kansas and then Baylor. I mean, yeah, like that's that's going to be awesome when, when they come to McHale. And that is a, a – for those that don't know, uh, that is a really weird gym to play in. Like the sight lines are very strange. Uh, it's a weird shape and all that. It's not an easy place to play. Yes, exactly. But it's good and it's going to get you battle tested. You got to be more physical. I think one thing that we've had uh, with Tommy Lloyd's teams is sometimes they haven't been the most physical. Sometimes they've they've gone into games and you're kind of like, all right, well, you were able to win that game or you lost that game, but you probably should have lost by more and you just went in there because you were Arizona. But if you go in and you play one of those games against Oregon State, then you are going to lose by 45 points. So yep. that's you're going to have to be on your toes for sure. Yeah, and we're okay. always on our toes, Mike. We are always on our toes. Now, Jacob Franklin, please pull that schedule back up, Jacob Franklin. Okay, now, BYU, Jacob Franklin's uh, a de facto, yeah. default favorite team yeah. as well. Um, BYU is, uh, you know, it's a tough place to play, but I don't know. I don't really have any opinions about BYU. They're good, though. They're not they're a bad good. team. They're, and, they're, and that's and they're the thing we're talking about. Like, Baylor's really good, and Baylor's better than BYU, but if you take the night off against BYU, they'll smack you. Yes, exactly. Now, now, let's get to Iowa State. Iowa State, very fascinating, a very scrumptious matchup because you've got Arizona – Going into Hilton, and everybody always says that Hilton is probably one of, is yeah. one of the ten best uh, home environments in the country. I'm very excited to see that. Plus, they're coming here. Iowa State returns everybody from last year. Iowa State should be very, very good. Um, I am very excited to see this matchup. Sheer another one going against players that are big, physical players that lift weights. Yeah, that's another one you split your cool with. I I've never been to Hilton, but I remember like I asked I asked our boy Daniel Burke. Back then when we when we saw him, the toughest place in the Big 12 besides Kansas, and he said Hilton right away. Uh, and, and that seems to be the Big 12 consensus is that Hilton is is very, very difficult to play in. Right. Per, yeah. Now, per, now with the uh, – with uh, let's see here. Bring it up. Jacob Franklin. Dude, I'm never going to remember all of this stuff. Just he wants to see our face. Just I get you. Okay, thanks. Texas Tech. 
All right, Texas Tech, people forget, and this is where the Big 12 is just crazy. People forget that Texas Tech is a year, like four years or five years removed from playing in, what, the national championship game? I mean, so even schools you don't even think about, Texas Tech, big time, big time. I mean, again, going into Lubbock, Arizona is also recruiting Lubbock for football as well. Texas Tech should be an interesting one as well, Jason Shearer. Uh, yep, another hard place to play. I remember that game against Texas last year where it looked like there was going to be a, a riot. Uh, right. Yeah, well, I mean, another. But, it, it, but like, eventually, like, Arizona's got to win some of these road games. It's just not going to be easy. Yeah, it's not going to be easy now. Jacob Franklin, can you pull this back up, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. All right, the schedule. Now, we've got Colorado, Houston, and Colorado and Houston. We'll break those down. All right, Colorado, I expect Colorado to not be very good. Which we always talk about John. All right, I almost John. They'll be Tesh. bad. Yes, Tad Boyle is the John Tesh of coaching where you're not really good, but you're not quite bad enough to fire you. You're just always going to be there. They accept mediocrity there. Arizona should be able to beat the snot out of Colorado. Can you uh, can, can you just add, like, we got to think, Tad Boyle had three draft picks, two right. first-rounders, two lottery or whatever, and, and did nothing with them. Yes, exactly. Like that's, oh. And... and they're going to be bad next year. Like you got to, if you lose KJ Simpson and the other two, like you're going to be bad. Right. Right. Oh, all right. Jacob Franklin says he can't leave the video up for He's like, right. He's minutes. right. I just said that, that video. too. Fine. I'm Jacob Franklin. Up on this one. You're going to have to help you. me. You're, you're going to have to help me with this. All right. Now let's get to uh, Houston, Houston. Very, very interesting. So Houston returns seven of their eight starters. You lose Jamal Shedd, a.k.a. Jaden Bradley 1.0. But you bring in Milos Uzon. I think he's just, oh, man, I think he's okay. But, That's man, they're big. Thing. They're big. They're physical. They're strong. Um, this is going to be another one where you can really test the physicality of everything, Sheer. I am excited about this one as well. Yeah, I mean, you know they're well coached. You know they're going to be physical and strong. They'll struggle offensively a bit, but they their their defensive intensity is crazy. I think Houston's really good, but it is not easy to replace a guy like Jamal Shedd. Right. Uh, and I'm not a big Milos Uzon fan. I haven't been since high school. We've talked about him probably. You don't too like many him because Sean Miller didn't recruit him, though, correct? No, that was a Tommy guy. Oh, it was a Tommy. Oh, because generally, if you don't like somebody, I think Sean no. Miller didn't like him. Tommy, right? Tommy's watched him, and I watched him with Tommy, and we didn't like him at section yeah. seven. Uh, right. Didn't think he was good enough. Yeah, I, I just. It, it, Houston's really good, though. And you know they're going to be well-coached. And you know they're not going to get Shook and McHale and all that. Yes, exactly. So that's really good. And I think that's also a good uh, – I think it's a good wake-up call, too. What I like about all these teams is they are all big and they are all physical and they are all going to be very good. By the way, Sheer, do you want to take your L now or you want to take it later on Cody Williams being a top-10 pick? I don't understand what L you're talking about. You said you didn't think he was good enough for Arizona to offer. He what does that have to do with NBA, Mike? He was just picked in the top-10. But he was, he was, he was, he sucked at Colorado. We, you even admitted it the other day. He averaged 11 and four. Mike, who cares? Who's he playing over at Arizona? He averaged 11 and four. He was clearly good who enough. Who was he going to play over at Arizona? He was clearly good enough. That is all I'm who saying. Who was he going to play over he at Arizona? He would have been in the rotation. He would have, Arizona would have been deep. can't answer the question. Arizona would have been he deep. would have not. Mike, no. you, I, I win. I don't no, care. No, you win. You I lose. Can't. You can't – I'm going to fight back on this one. You can't go on this show like I do and say, I don't care what a guy prep is for the NBA or what he is. I only care about what he is in college. And then say you want to bet because he went top 10. He was 11 and 4 in the uh, – but he was 11 and 4. You make it out like he wasn't good. I just said, who would he play over? And you have yet to answer. I don't Because you would have had to expand the rotation. He would have forced his way into it. I win. 11 and 4. No, no, no. People are with me, dude. No, no, no. This is stupid. All right, Watch. now. Would he, have, would he have played over Pella? I would have played him over Pella. Would he have played over Pella? No. no but that's would also he, because would he, over, would he have played over KJ Lewis? But that's also because Tommy plays favorites. That's not fair. You could have I put forgot, by the way, that uh, Houston's bringing in Masterpiece Son as well. You could, have, you could have put the point. You could have put the best point guard in the country on Arizona this past year, and Kylan Boswell would have still started over him. All I'm saying is. Is that not true? Him not get him going picked in in the draft has nothing to do with anything we talked about. By the way, he's also a spacer. For all you spacers out there, he shot forty something percent from three. He's a spacer, so they should spacers should love him. 
All right, anyway. Now, Jacob Franklin, you pull the schedule back up again. I win. Okay, uh, now. Our by the way, how many players, players in last night's draft did you know? Oh, we'll, we're going to get to the draft. We'll get to the draft. <laughs> um, I got many thoughts on the draft. Uh, Tommy does play. Tommy does play favorites. I love Tommy, but uh, he plays favorites. Yeah, what a big. Island Boswell was a favorite. Um, Arizona yeah. should sweep this home schedule. Yeah, I said it. I yeah, said TCU, it. TCU, UCF, and Utah. Here's where it's interesting, though. Okay, Jacob Franklin, your that schedule is dismissed. But with uh, with UCF, you got to remember this though. With UCF, UCF is kind of the epitome of the uh, the Big Twelve team that's crummy. But didn't they beat like Kansas and Baylor yeah. last year? But the good thing is, the difference is Arizona doesn't have to go to UCF. Like, if Arizona had to go to UCF on a Thursday or a Wednesday or something like that, yeah. that would have been wild. That's a tough game. So right. that's actually a dub that Arizona doesn't have to go. And if you notice, Mike, they don't go and play the uh, the mountain schools. There's no road mountain games, too. Right. Yeah. So that, uh, that's fine with that. Those that's teams stink win. though. I don't, yeah, but I don't, you don't want to, it's still, that's not an easy trip, the mountain road trip. And then they don't have to go to UCF. I know people are mad uh, about not having Kansas, but there's actually some good things with this schedule. Do, do Colorado basket, do Colorado basketball coaches and you and I were talking about this this weekend. Do they actually recruit? Someone said Tad was at the event, but I'm I not sure he was. I did not see him. Yeah, I did not see him. All right. Now, Andre Andre Veris just said UCLA is still coach or U, UCF is coached by Johnny Dawkins. Who's worse, Dawkins or Boyle? Dawkins Ooh. by a mile. Dawkins yeah. by a mile. At least Colorado. Yeah. Call, here's the deal with Colorado. They'll never generally suck, and they'll get into the NCAA tournament once every two or three years. Johnny Dawkins was never even getting into the tournament. Yeah, and that always brings back the argument, would you rather have a coach that doesn't bring in a lot of talent and doesn't do well? Or a coach that brings in a lot of talent but still doesn't do well. Or a coach that brings in a lot of talent that doesn't ever maximize it type stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like a, you know, like a, I don't know, a guy that might have been here before. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, Mike's taking more shots at Tommy Lloyd today. No, I wasn't taking shots wow. at Tommy Lloyd. <laughs> oh, hey, real real quick. Us. And Brad Rich, the great Brad Rich said, we do we do need to admit this, though. When we, like, we love Tommy. Hope Tommy's here forever. Tommy does play favorites. Come on. What is this Maxwell guy talking about farts? Is this your burner? Oh, no, but we're going to talk because I was tweeting about farts earlier. Um, um, did, did you see that thing about the sign of a strong relationship is when you're prepared to fart in front of your partner? Have you done that yet? No, I have not. Um, we're not that far <laughs> along yet. But when I get there, that's going to be one of those things. Once the Hoover Dam breaks, there's no <laughs> returning back. When that happens, we're doing an emergency broadcast. Emergency podcast. I will call Jacob Franklin and say yes. All right. <laughs> now, Jacob Franklin, can you please pull that schedule back up? Now we got to look at the uh, they got to look at the away games. Okay. Now, Cincinnati, Kansas, and Kansas State. Um, Cincinnati. And Kansas State and whatever, who cares? Um, Kansas no, Kansas State on the road is pretty tough. That is tough. We are going to get to that in a second. Um, but Kansas, uh, Kansas though is very um, Kansas. Yeah. I got to give you guys a. Uh, I got to give you guys a little bit of a background here. I was at Vasa Fitness getting buff like Jacob Franklin. By the way, do you see Jacob Franklin in the background? It looks like he's got a massive headache. I don't know what's going on with him. He doesn't I can't look see anything. You can't see Jacob Franklin? Oh, I guess only I can. Um, yes. K-State on the road is legit. I'm not saying they're not. I want to talk about Kansas, though, because they interest me more. With Kansas, though, I told Shear and our good friend John Brogan, I told him that uh, – I told them, I said, Kansas is going to be so far and away, the number one uh, team in the country it won't even be close. It'll be unanimous. Both of these sc guys scoffed at me. They That's scoffed. They laughed everything. Guess what? Guess who's the unanimous preseason number one? Kansas. Sheer? This is not what happened, folks. What happened was before Kansas had finalized their roster and become the number one team in the country, Mike said they were number one. And then they added like four more players. And then it was like, oh, okay. At the Kansas time, they now, now they are. Yes. Kansas is easily the best team in the country, correct? You agree? Yes. Now they are, for sure. Okay. So that's going to be the game that I'm very much looking forward to. I was in Kansas. I was in Fog Allen back in 2002, my friends, when Salim Stoudemire scored 800 points in the second half in Arizona one. But you look at Kansas, they're loaded. They've got 
Hunter Dickinson. They got KJ Adams. They got AJ Store. They got the Zeke uh, Najee or Zeke Najee. Um, Zeke Mayo or whatever it was. Uh, they've also got Dewan Harris. You got that five star big off the bench. I know they lost that dude uh, that tore his uh, um, patella, but he wasn't any good anyways. And um, that's where it. Uh, but again, it's a loaded team. Sheer AJ Store, obviously. You apologize right now. Uh, yeah, sure. Yes. At the time, Kansas was at number one. Now they are. You were number one. I sent you a list where they were number one. Uh, look, can we just talk about Bill Self's hair? Yes, we will talk about Bill Self's hair. Oh, Lonnie Johnson, the great Lonnie Johnson. Welcome to the chat, my friend. Very much looking forward to this. Uh, when you do, you guys uh, join the Big Twelve July first. That's a good question. Uh, June thirtieth, the Pac-12 Network goes dark. So yeah, I'd assume July first. <laughs> 